Now, it's not yet December, but the Christmas decorations are up in many of the shops already, and one of the big holiday films has just been released, a new version of A Christmas Carol. The Dickens classic has been adapted for the screen many times, but never quite like this. In 3D, with real actors turned into animated puppets thanks to cutting-edge motion capture technology. The film stars Jim Carrey as Scrooge and a favourite British actor, Colin Firth, as his benign nephew, Fred. I met Colin Firth recently to talk about this latest film, and I began by asking him how the film technicians went about creating his animated alter ego. They made me stand in my underwear while they, um, and, and go through different positions. Well, they basically scanned me with an inch of my life. Um, you know, sensors went up and down the body. I had to then change positions and sensors went uh, with the back and the front and the cameras sort of going around you. And then you sit and you're, you go through a, an extraordinary array of facial expressions, which I don't think occur in, 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 in human nature. Really. <laughs> that all goes into a database. And they, it makes what they call a virtual puppet. A horse? No. A cow? No. A dog? No. A pig? No. An ass? Yes and no. Ooh. Oh, I know who it is, Fred. I know. It's your Uncle Scrooge. Yes. <laughs> What's it like as an actor to do, though? I mean, it must, it's, a, it's acting as you've never done it before, presumably. Well, it is in a way, but not in the direction people imagine. Once you've gone through all that very odd stuff I've just described, and you are wearing clothes, and you, you know, you're in a spandex suit covered in dots, and you're wearing a helmet with little cameras pointing at you. <laughs> Once you are over that, yes. you're just acting. Actually, you're going to get to a point where you don't need actors because you all look so lifelike, really. They're just going to, they're going to digitally create you. Well, paradoxically, you? this is more dependent on actors than any of the other animation forms you can think of because you can't do it without them. Good. I mean, so your future's one... safe. You're all right. Well, yes. I mean, I, even if this took over, I mean, I, it won't take over. I mean, any more than animation took over from, from live action. You play again the lovely English gentleman. Mr. Darcy, that is what you are so very well known for. Do you still feel now, all these years later, that that is something that is very much... Is it a burden or is it something you're very proud of? I'm fairly indifferent to it, quite frankly. You can't I mean, be, you know, I say, I'm going to go and talk to Colin Firth, Mr. Darcy. Oh, they all say. Yeah, I mean, but that's you and that's them. And I don't, you know, I, I've just done, I mean, it's 15 years ago or something, and I've done so much since. But uh, you played you know, on that role as well, didn't you? And it's a great comic effect in Bridget yeah. Jones. You used mm -hmm. it to your, to your best advantage. Yes, I did, and it was, uh, it was fun, and I think it was very helpful, um, you know, from all sorts of uh, points of view to do that. Um, I'd, I'd, like to, I'd quite like to have another look at it, actually, because I haven't seen it since 1995. Really? And, um, and even then, I don't think I watched all of it. And it would be quite, I'd be quite curious to, to actually see what the fuss was about. Do you still not get it all these years later? I get it in that I, I, it's, it's a very powerful story. I mean, like Christmas Carol, it's the, there is cert, the, the power of storytelling by quite a lot of these extraordinary 19th century writers are they endure because they, they become something of a ritual that we all indulge, you know? I mean, Christmas Carol goes with every Christmas, really. I mean, it's one of those stories that could be retold, whether it's by the Muppets or Mr. <laughs> Magoo or, you know. Um, it, it's something that bears retelling because for some reason we want to go through that now again. And you've had all kinds of huge range of different roles as well. I mean, the, the Mamma Mia thing, that was wonderful. You, that must have been a, a fantastic film to make. Mamma Mia, I don't think, could have worked had we not enjoyed ourselves. I mean, fun is contagious and fake fun isn't. And so I think we had to make a bit of a decision. We're going to have to have a good time if it kills us. You know, and it's, we're not really at a karaoke night. We're not at a party. <laughs> we're not, it's not a stag night. We're not drunk. It's eight in the morning. Um, the instruction is, have fun. Um, it was work, but um, it, was a, you know, it was a lovely group of people, and it was a, it, it, the whole thing was, I just think, so delightfully silly, really. You have, though, another film coming out. You've obviously been extremely busy, oh, a, a single, single man. man. But it's a very different role for you, isn't it? I mean, you're, pair, you're playing <clears throat> a gay, as I understand it, a gay university lecturer who is grieving for his, his partner who's been killed in a car crash. Yeah, I mean, it's a very different role, full stop. 
When I read this script, I thought, I don't quite know what genre I'd put it in. You know, whatever else it was ever going to be, it wasn't going to be an ordinary experience, um, not least because of who was directing it. Tom Ford, who is Tom the Ford. designer turned film director. Exactly. And you've obviously done an extremely good job. People are talking about you now already as, as a sort of Oscar hopeful. Is that an important thing for you? Do you want, well, I mean, do you feel, you know, my, this is my time, my time and about time two, which, which some critics say. Um, no, you can't think about time two. I mean, I mean my life is a bit random. Um, I go from assignment to assignment, and I, uh, you know, I still can't quite believe that I'm still being employed. I mean, <laughs> you leave drama school and pray you're going to get a job, you know, and you pray you get an agent and an equity card, and to still be at it, really, at, at, at getting on for 50. You are, I suppose, a a campaigning actor as well, aren't you? And you've done an awful lot of work for their Make Trade Fair campaign for years now. But actually, you don't court the publicity that a lot of people do, a lot of people in your position could do. And you, you're very much behind the scenes, aren't you? You do. You go off and lobby Peter Mandelson when he was in Brussels, or you go to Downing Street and lobby Gordon Brown. But you're not making a big song and dance in the press about it. Well, you've got to be rather careful. I mean, you know, the campaigning actor is a dangerous epithet, really. I mean, I, nobody really wants uh, to hear the, all the information about the woes of the world from an actor. I'm a voter, I'm a citizen, I'm a, commu I'm a, I'm a consumer. Uh, that makes me complicit in all the things that um, radiate out from that. You know, everything I buy is a political act as far as I'm concerned. I mean, you, your, your, your purchasing habits are, are like votes. Um, you have choices. Uh, I think, you know, to censor myself, because I'm an actor, because somebody out there is going to say stick to your knitting, <laughs> isn't, you know, it doesn't work for me, it's patronising. But you've obviously had an impact, I mean you've won awards for this. I think that one of the things in which I've found myself more helpful than anything else is that the people who really do it, the people who, who have it as a day job and who sort of work at the sharp end of it all, like having somebody who's got a, a bit of a profile who can get to a journalist on their side. But you, you stop trying to measure it in terms of impact and help, it, it's just a, it's an endless kind of, you know, it's like Sisyphus pushing the ball up the hill, really. I'll have to leave it there. Colin Firth, right. thank you very much. Thank you.